There lived a woman named John Doe. It was always um, right here in Tokyo, Japan. Now, as you know, we had this uh, typhoon roll through um, Japan here past couple of days. Manu ni we. It's a kind of an odd name to pronounce. You know. And I saw the videos, you know, that you guys are putting up there from the Western Action Nuclear Movement. I saw the reactionary behavior, all the freakouts, the screaming, the shouting, all that. Yep. Nice, cute, really. And, you know, you're not here. But I am. So, I'll explain to you some things that actually have happened. Now here in Tokyo, we got some rain, a little heavier than normal rain for about two days, and we got some pretty strong wind. It's about sunset now. Uh, the typhoon's already well past us at this point. And what also has happened is that there has been some extensive, pretty devastating flooding in Kyoto. Kyoto is the ancient capital of Japan. I know people are going to have to deal with that, and that's horrific. But you don't see the anti-nuclear movement talking about that, now do you? No, they're ranting and raving about Fukushima. As a typical could do, rant and rave, you know, without actually being here. You know. So, let's look at a bit of the geography around F Fukushima MPP. Now, the actual plant is right at sea level. It's pretty flat. The rest of that prefecture is um, actually um, small rolling hills. Not exactly mountainous, but it's small rolling hills. Okay? Now, we're all aware of the um, radioactive groundwater and the water coming out of the plant and we all know what's causing that and all these things. We also know the struggle they're having to prevent the groundwater from seeping up into the plant and eventually going right into the Pacific Ocean. And we also know that it's been leaking to the Pacific pretty clear now. You know, there's still a little bit of speculation about how much, but it's been leaking in the Pacific. You know, Tepco has come out and said it's happened. A lot of water, contaminated water. But the point I want to make here, guys, is that do you actually believe that one typhoon of many that we have every year here in Japan is going to be some type of death kill that's going to make the problem worse than it already is? Really? It's already bad up there. And one more typhoon rolling through there is not gonna make it catastrophic. Does it help? No. Should TEPCO be doing more? Yeah. But this whole thing, every time something happens in Japan, these Western anti-nuclear people fly off the handle become totally, totally reactionary and freak out. And every event like this, like a typhoon or an earthquake, they want to bring up, you see, you see how dangerous it is. You see, that's going to be the thing that does it. That's going to be finally the thing that makes a radioactive explosion happen and all those rods. <sighs> that's... Fear mongering. That's you justifying not being here. That's you justifying not getting on the front lines here in Japan. There are those of us who know that. There are those of us who are fully aware of what you're doing. You're too scared to come over here, go into the zone, or actually attend a protest with the Japanese people. 
So you're justifying not doing that by doing the things you do and all these videos you make over there. Flying off the handle, being reactionary, you know, making the most extreme statements you possibly can make. But I'm here. I can tell you for a fact that one more typhoon of many that we have here in Japan every every year is not going to be the one, the big one, all right? Because you, have you actually ever experienced a typhoon after it hits mainland in Japan? Do you know the typical weather patterns that typhoons have in Japan? How they come into the mainland and how they slow down? If you look this up, you ever experienced it? No, you haven't. Do you know how much rainfall usually happens and where it typically happens? You don't know. So come on, guys. Don't do this again. I'm asking you, please, don't do this again. Now, I'm pretty sure you will. You won't listen to someone who's actually here. You won't listen to not only Japanese people on the front lines, but someone like me, you know, what they call a quote-unquote gaijin, who's lived here for quite a long time now. You won't do that. I'm confident. And you'll probably be reactionary to this video. Come out and scream a bunch of garbage at me. Attack me. Or write me off and refuse to listen to anything I say. That's my point, okay? Learn about how typhoons actually behave when they come into Japan. And like I said, I'm not downplaying the fact that it is going to create more water getting to the ground. And it's going to seep up and it's going to come down, right? But that, that happens a lot, okay? That's called weather patterns. Alright? That's weather patterns. And that's what happens when we have a typhoon anywhere in Japan. The water table increases. That's yes, basic logic, okay? And at Fukushima, since they're struggling to control that, yeah, it's going to flow over. Good possibility of that. Of course. Okay? So that's it for me on this whole issue. Until next time, this is me, John Dole, checking out.